Okay, hello. We're going to continue by doing proofs 44 and 45. 42 and 43 were the De Morgan's Laws for the quantifiers, which contain, I feel like, the deep understanding of everything that's going on. Um, 44 is just practice. <clears throat> this is just a extra kind of annoying problem with some extra crap thrown in to give you some more experience with, with kind of doing this yourself. Uh, so, alright, let's go. Um, I think this is essentially just kind of proof 42 uh, over again, but maybe like a little bit harder actually. Um, so, okay, uh, we begin. Well, I don't think I can fit this entire proof on one board, so I might have to just uh, do half of it and then, um, and then uh, kind of erase. I think that's okay because it's really two proofs ultimately, it's a biconditional and so we need to show that the left one goes to the right and the right one goes to the left. Alright, so let's begin. Um, what am I going to do first? I'm going to assume the left. So I'll suppose that for all x, uh, not p of x, uh, for all x is true that not p of x and q of x. So kind of like, I don't know what, what things we're using. Uh, everyone is, is kind of not pretty and quiet. So everyone, everyone is, 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 is quiet and not pretty. Uh, and if that's true, that everyone is not uh, pretty and quiet, then I'm supposed to show that there can't exist someone who is um, pretty or noisy. Uh, because in fact, it's just not true that there is anyone who is, who is pretty or noisy because everyone is quiet and everyone is not pretty. All right, how are we going to do this? Uh, well, fortunately, um, I think this first half is the one that just writes itself because uh, the thing we're trying to prove is a negation. So down here, what I want is that it's not the case that there exists an x, uh, p of x, or not q of x, and this is, if this is my goal, then this suggests I should try to do a proof by contradiction. So what I will do up here in line 2 is I will assume that there is an x such that p of x or not q of x, and I will get a bottom and then I'll be done. Okay, so how am I going to get this bottom? Well, alright, I have lines 1 and 2, both of which are giving me a lot of sort of opportunities to, to jump in, but specifically line 2 tells me that there's some certain person. And so to make any real progress in this proof, I need to uh, give that person a name. And so um, I'm going to begin a new subproof now, and uh, yeah. So I'll call this person A, and uh, uh, what is A? A is the person that I know exists by virtue of line 2. Line 2 asserts the existence of a person. Uh, I now begin a new subproof by calling that person in line 2 something. Call this person A. Uh, and so what property does A have? Kind of by definition, it has the property of, of the person that, that line 2 is talking about. Line 2 says someone exists, this is that person. Okay, now what? Uh, well, I want to show somehow that this is contradictory. Why is this, why does this lead to a contradiction? Well, line one is telling me that uh, uh, something, that everyone has a certain property. So I think the next kind of obvious thing to do is to just stick A in for X. And we get uh, not P of A uh, and Q of A. And this is um, universal elim one. <clears throat> and now we're just back down at the level of, of propositional logic. Uh, and so let's just do it, right? These two, I think, are, oops, this should be an A. These two are um, uh, clearly uh, contradictory, uh, pretty clearly. Uh, so let's just, let's just demonstrate that, that, that that's true. Um, so what do I know? Well, okay, actually there's a couple ways to do this, but I, I mean, one thing I could do is just decompose line four, because I, I do, in fact, know that A is not pretty, and I also know that A is quiet, um, reason, uh, and elim4 uh, is the reason for, for both of those. But now, uh, when I look at line 3, which is a disjunction, this suggests I should do a proof by cases. 
And when I do the proof by cases, supposing on the one hand that A is pretty, well, line 5 says that A just isn't pretty. So that's just not possible, because now I have that A is pretty and A is not pretty. Well, that's just a bottom. But on the other hand, uh, my other disjunct, which is that A is not quiet, well, line 6 tells me that A is quiet. So if A is quiet and A is not quiet, then that is a contradiction. And that means I just have a contradiction. Um, so this, this, is the, this is the proof. Let me uh, kind of uh, pause to, to explain. Uh, first, let me justify these uh, kind of uh, propositional logic uh, moves. Uh, of course, this was an an intro, uh, 7 and 5. This was a, a bottom intro, 8. This was an an intro, uh, 6 and 10. And a bottom intro, uh, 11. And uh, what's this line, 13? This is my proof by cases. I did an or elimination, otherwise known as proof by cases, on line 3. And I considered left disjunct, that A was pretty, in lines 7 through 9, that led to a bottom. Uh, I also, uh, that I then considered the right disjunct, uh, that A was not quiet, in lines 10 through 12, that led to a bottom as well, therefore the bottom follows from line 3. And all of this, I guess I'll just keep doing this. Uh, this entire uh, subproof here, uh, which began uh, just below line two, with my uh, man, this um, this uh, this, jeez, um, this entire uh, thing uh, that happened in this big red circle was just my exploration of line two. Line two uh, said that a certain person exists, or, or rather, line two says that someone exists with, um, with the property of being uh, pretty and, and not quiet. Uh, so I said, let's just name that person A temporarily for the moment. Temporarily call uh, X A. And uh, that led to a contradiction. And so, uh, that contradiction uh, simply follows from line two, uh, because um, by just naming that person A, I was, I was uh, able to show uh, that we have a contradiction. And so, uh, what is this? This is an existential elimination. I eliminated the existential in line two. Uh, how did I eliminate it? How did I eliminate it? I um, sort of methodically drew out from it a contradiction. Uh, in lines 3 to 13. Okay, so this is negation intro, um, and uh, 2 to 14. Okay, good. That was relatively straightforward. This was like the easy half of the proof. Um, I will pause for a second, erase the whole thing, and then we'll do the, the converse direction, which I think is more difficult. Okay, let's go. Uh, that was on 15. So now I'm going to start with line 16. Yeah. So here we go. Line 16. Cha cha. Um, there does not exist an x such that p of x or not q of x. Okay. So what do I know? Uh, this only. What do I want? That. So, way down here, uh, I shall put my goal statement, which is for all x, um, not p of x uh, and q of x. And, okay, how should I achieve this goal? Well, actually, maybe this part half isn't so hard uh, either, uh, because uh, there's really one good way to prove a universal, and that is with universal proof. So, uh, how, how can I prove that this uh, statement holds for all x? Well, I pick an arbitrary variable about which I assume nothing at all, 
And if based on nothing at all, I can show that A is not uh, pretty uh, and that A is quiet, then I'm entitled to conclude that everybody is not pretty and quiet. Uh, okay. Uh, now what? Well, now maybe I'm a little bit kind of stuck or something because um, what do I do now? Yeah, I, I actually this may just be not that hard uh, because uh, this is a this is a conjunction, and so if my goal is to um, well, there are probably a couple ways to do this, but one way which is not particularly inspired or anything is just to to, to prove each of these. So how can I prove that uh, A is not pretty? Well, suppose that A were pretty. Um, so here in line 17, I'll say, okay, suppose A is pretty. Well, that just can't be, right? Because if A is pretty, then A is pretty or A is quiet. And then that is a contradiction. Uh, because... Um, that uh, once I once I have once I have A being pretty and quiet, I can say so. It's sort of this is kind of interesting because it's sort of sort of I know A is pretty. I weaken my statement by by um, <clears throat> adding a disjunction onto it, and then I like infinitely weaken it by uh, saying that there just exists someone uh, who is pretty or um, not quiet. But that is the very thing that line sixteen says can't be. And so I get there exists an x, uh, p of x, or not q of x, um, is, and then and, just the, the very negation of that. So not there exists an x, p of x, or not q of x. I think there is a kind of a slightly faster way to do this, but maybe this is the most uh, straightforward. That's a bottom. Okay, and now, how do I prove uh, q? Well, I think I just will suppose that uh, Q, that A is not quiet. And, uh, well, the exact same logic follows. If A is not quiet, then A is pretty or not quiet. But if A is pretty or not quiet, then there exists someone who is pretty or not quiet. Cha, cha. Then... Uh, I can, yeah, uh, I can uh, and on to that um, line 16, uh, which says that that's not true, and that is a bottom. Okay, so where am I going here? I guess I should notate all of these. This is an OR intro 17. This is an existential intro uh, 18. This is an AND intro 19, 16. And this is a bottom intro 20. I don't think I've done this problem uh, in, in 10 years or something because uh, it's not that exciting and it's, it's just not that hard either, I realize. So here, this is OR intro uh, 22. This is an existential intro 23. Yeah. This is an AND intro 24-16 and a bottom intro uh, 25. So what's happened? Uh, I messed up is one thing that happened. Oops. Um, you might have been wondering, uh, whoa, what were you, where are you going with all this? Why did you, uh, this is kind of a little bit embarrassing. I guess I can um, just fix this up uh, by making a little bit of space. Um, the point uh, of getting this contradiction was because my goal is to prove not P of A. So really I should have a line 22 here which is not P of A. I'm sorry. So this is 23, this is 24, this is 25, uh, 26, and 27, which makes these numbers a little bit off because uh, this is going to be just, everyone, everyone just needs to get a, a bump of 1, uh, that's 25, and 26. Okay. So, and then here, uh, this bottom 
tells me not not q of a, uh, which tells me um, q of a, and then really I'm done. This is this was getting a little bit uh, sloppy. Uh, the justification here was negation intro, uh, 17 through 21. Uh, the justification here was negation intro 23 through 27. And this is negation E, limb 28. Uh, and finally, uh, in line 30, I just conjoin together the, the two things I proved, the 22 and the 29. And um, since I assumed nothing whatsoever and proved about some arbitrary object A that they have this property, well then everyone has that property. Okay. Um, so that was maybe a little bit boring. I, I think my, my heart wasn't uh, totally in this one because uh, this is just really just a straight rehash of some, some things we did already. Mm. Let's do uh, proof 45. Proof 45 is really hard. And yeah, it's as hard as it gets. It's I think by far the hardest proof uh, we've done so far in this whole class, and it's basically the hardest proof we're gonna do. Um, the very next proof, 46, is is slightly harder, but it's just 45 over again, just with uh, some extra junk thrown in. So technically, it's harder, but uh, if you factor in novelty, it is it is not harder. Uh, so okay, proof 45. If you got this all by yourself, you know I'm I'm just extremely impressed. It assumes that you are kind of an expert on uh, proof 42. Uh, so that may or may not be true. Uh, once again, I think I, I can't fit it all on the, on the page. So we're going to do um, it in two stages. After all, it's a biconditional. So this is really, it's really two proofs in one. It's just going from left to right and then from, from right to left. And uh, one of the directions is easy. Oh, I, I didn't uh, actually write what it is. <coughs> had the old uh, thing up there. Uh, so what what is it? Uh, well, here it is. There exists a y such that for all x, uh, not uh, p of x, y, uh, if and only if, um, not for all y, there exists an x, p of x, y. Okay. So, um, and here we have uh, P as some kind of binary predicate, so it's, it's helpful to, to give it some kind of interpretation just so we can talk about it. Let's make some nice kind of active verb, which is intransitive, like punched. Okay, so uh, PXY means X punched Y. What is this talking about? Well, all right, let's start with the right-hand side. Um, suppose you take off this not for a second. What is this trying to say? Well. What this is trying to say is, for every without the not, this says, uh, for every single person in the entire world, there exists someone that punched them. So everyone gets punched. Every single, imagine this giant melee or whatever, and everyone's punching everyone else and blah, 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 blah. No one escapes, you know, unscathed, right? Uh, everyone gets punched. Well, the, putting the negation in the front says that that's not true. So if it's not the case that, uh, that for every single person there is someone that punched them, then there must be an unpunched person. Well, that's what this says right here, right? This says that there exists some special person Y, so it said for everyone else, X didn't punch Y. So okay, this is now totally intuitive maybe, right? Uh, the right-hand side saying that um, it's, it's, it's not true that everyone gets punched, and the left-hand side saying there's one person that no one punches. <coughs> okay, uh, let's do it. Uh, and, and am I right that yes, uh, going from, from left to right is, is I don't want to say easy, but it's easier. <coughs> so um, so let's, let's do it. Uh, starting in line one, I say there exists a y such that for all x, I'm not uh, px y. 
and I want uh, down there this this thing. All right. So um, yeah. Well, so this is not uh, for all y. There exists an x p x y. Okay. Well, I think. The straightforward way to do this, then, is by contradiction. Uh, it's a negation after all, so that's the sort of obvious step to, to do. So, okay, let's do it. Uh, let's suppose that uh, for all y, there is an x such that uh, pxy, and I'll be kind of inconsistent here with my parentheses. I guess I should do this. Some people don't. Uh, and uh, then down here, I will get a bottom, and, and, and I'll be done. Okay, um, well, uh, I now have two lines, one and two, both of which are, are kind of promising, but uh, it's line one which is really giving me the kind of power to, to do something. Line one says, <coughs> there exists some special person who doesn't get punched. So let's give that person a name. I prefer to go in alphabetical order, kind of like, through the predicate. So I'm going to call this person B. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to begin a subgroup uh, with uh, this new um, uh, variable B. And what is B? B is just my temporary name for the person in line 1. Line 1 says there's some special person Y. I'm going to temporarily name that person B. And okay, what do I know about B? I know that for all X, not uh, P, X, B, chunk, chunk. Okay. Uh, well, now I have kind of lines 2 and 3. What can I do with lines 2 and 3? Well, uh, it seems that now 2 is kind of the next place to start because what is line 3 saying? Line 3 is saying everybody didn't punch B. So B is some person that no one punched. Everybody didn't punch B. No one punched B, you might say. Well, what does line 2 say? Line 2 says, for everyone, uh, there is someone that punched them. So 2 and 3 are just obviously contradictory. Line 2 says, every, for every single person, someone punched them. And yet line 3 says that no one punched B. And so the clear thing to do is to stick B in for Y in number 2. And so that's what I'll do. Uh, this tells me that there exists an X such that... Uh, P, X, uh, B. And where did this line 4 come from? It came from universal elim uh, 2. Okay, so now I have uh, lines uh, 3 and 4. And I hope you see that they are also intuitively contradictory. What is line 4 saying? Line 4 says there exists, there exists someone who punched B. But line 3 is saying that everybody didn't punch B. So these now two are kind of like obviously contradictory to each other. Uh, how can I show that this is the case? Well, I can't make much progress with line 4 until I uh, explore it uh, by, by giving that person a name. So line 4 asserts the existence of some, some person, and so what we will do is now begin a new subproof in which we temporarily name that person in line 4. Uh, what are we going to temporarily name them? We will temporarily name them A. And so what we're going to say is P A B. But really, what's happening here is this is what this subproof that I'm starting flows from line four. Line four asserts the existence of some person that punched B. I'm saying let's call that person A temporarily. All right. Well, now um, line uh, three is outrageous because line three says everyone didn't punch B, but here A punched B. So if I stick. Um, and A in for X in line 3, then I get not uh, P, A, B. And uh, where did this come from again? This is, uh, again, a universal elim, but now on line 3. Well, this is now a contradiction. Here I have um, A punched B, and A didn't uh, punch B. Uh, that is a bottom. So this is an intro 5, 6. Uh, and this is a bottom intro um, set. Well, uh, great. Uh, what, what, sort of, sort of, so what? Well, the so what is that, in fact, then I'm entitled to a bottom 
uh, back out one line. And the reason is, I guess just to continue doing this, this entire thing that happened in this red circle here uh, flowed from line four. Line four asserted the existence of a person. Uh, I chose to temporarily name that person A. Um, by exploring line four, I, I explored line four by giving the person in line four a, a temporary name, and I arrived at a, at a contradiction in line eight. And so that contradiction really comes from line four itself. And so uh, this is an existential elim, uh, line four, five through eight. Okay. Uh, and then, um, and I think this is what makes this uh, proof kind of hard, everything in this blue circle uh, was really just the exploration of line one. Because line one asserted the existence of some, some person Y, and I chose to explore that further by temporarily naming that person uh, in line one uh, B. And what happened from that exploration? Well, I arrived at a contradiction. And so that contradiction just follows from line one. So uh, the, the way you should be sort of thinking about this, okay, and 10 years ago or something when I first taught this, my students, uh, when they were practicing these really hard proofs like this, they were just like, bottom it out, bottom it out, bottom, 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 bottom it out. It seems that, it seems that once you arrive at a contradiction, that contradiction just kind of bleeds out to the rest of the proof or something. But if you slow down and, and sort of think about oh, what's really happening is um, it, it's, it's more uh, w with these kind of colors, uh, you should sort of think of these contradictions as fundamentally flowing from the existential that I was exploring when I chose to, to start this existential Elim proof. Okay, I don't know if that helps anybody, but uh, the, the justification for, for this line 10 is existential Elim 1, uh, 3 through 9. I took an existential statement in line 1, uh, I, I eliminated it by using it, by exploring it, by getting some information out of it. I did that the only way you can do that with an existential uh, by, by giving a temporary name to that variable and seeing what comes of that. Well, what came of that is a contradiction, so we just have a contradiction. And finally, in line 11, we have negation intro um, uh, 2 through 10, and that's, that's the first half of the proof right there. All right, so that wasn't super hard. Uh, in some ways, every step was kind of obvious, and... Um, Yet, it was still difficult because we had sort of multiple variables uh, floating around and, and, and whatever else. All right. Um, I'm going to erase this now, and we're going to do the, the converse, which is just significantly harder, I think. And then that'll be it for this particular video. Um, and we're then almost done with this entire series, I believe. After this, I think there'll be just one more video after this one. <coughs> okay. Um, let's go. So, oh, I already forgot. What, what, that was line 11. I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, here we'll start in line 12. I'll write uh, maybe kind of small. Uh, so I need to now go from, from right to left. So now I assume that it's not the case that for all y there exists an x, um, pxy. And uh, way down here, I need uh, that, uh, I need to prove that there exists a y such that for all x, uh, not pxy. Okay, so some just kind of level of experience and comfort with doing a million of these proofs uh, maybe is, is, is helpful here. Uh, and so two, two sort of ways we can think about this, I guess. One is... Come on, uh, there's nothing I can do with this line 12. It's a negation. Nothing, you can't do anything with the negation. The destiny of a negation is to be used in a proof by contradiction. So this line one is, this line 12 is getting me nowhere. Um, maybe a better way of thinking about it is that uh, this goal of mine uh, to prove that there exists uh, some person Y with some certain property. Well, what, what, what is that property? It's the property of um, no one punching them. 
uh, right? Uh, that's that's what it, there exists a Y such that everyone didn't punch it up. I need to prove that there's this unpunched person out there. Well, of course I'm not going to be able to 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 produce a particular person who is unpunched. And so uh, there's really only one possible thing to do now, and that is to do this proof by contradiction. Uh, because uh, my only way of proving an existential statement, the only way to prove that there exists some kind of person, is either to either to produce that person, you know, what we call a witness, uh, and, and that's just not possible here, right? Uh, there's no way I'm going to, to be able to do that. So, okay, I am therefore committed to uh, the following approach, where in line 13, maybe I don't need to write quite this small, maybe I do though, uh, in line uh, 13, I'm going to uh, assume that this is false, that there does, that, that there does not exist a y, uh, such that um, for all x, um, not pxy. And this will hopefully lead to a, a contradiction. Uh, and then I will conclude, you know, not, not there exists a y for all x, not pxy. Uh, and then I'll have the thing I want. Okay. So, all right, I got a new goal. Show that lines 12 and 13 together lead to a contradiction. Okay. How am I going to do this? Well, unfortunately, I still have two negations. And neither of those negations are sort of immediately usable <coughs> in any kind of way. And in fact, um, the only way to, to use a negation is in a proof by contradiction uh, to, to produce a bottom. So um, here is, I think, the part that's uh, very subtle, uh, which is, mm, well, this is, I guess this is equally subtle as, as with, um, uh, as with proof, uh, proof 42. Which of these statements, 12 or 13, is going to produce this contradiction? And um, the answer is, it's got to be 12, right? 12 is the one that's going to do it because uh, look, either I'm going to prove, you know, for all y there exists an x p x y, or I'm going to prove there there exists y. But if I could have proven um, the negationless thirteen, then I would have just done so directly. So I don't have any uh, viable path to to proving this line down here, and so uh, that tells me that what I should really be trying to prove is is this line twelve, the opposite of line twelve. So that's my goal. Um, my goal now is going to be to prove that uh, for all y, uh, there exists an x such that pxy. And um, why is that so great? Because then I will end that uh, together with line 1. Uh, and when I end that together, with line one, I'll have the contradiction that I want, and this, this proof will be done. Okay, so we're really going outside in. Okay, what next? Well, I have a kind of a method now. I have a, at least one step uh, is clear to me, which is how to prove this. How do I prove it? Well, there's a good way, and again, I'm going to use a B, just because I want to kind of go in alphabetical order, um, with, with A always punching B. So what am I going to do? Uh, assume nothing, and if I can prove from nothing that uh, there exists an x that's punched b, uh, then if I can always prove that uh, someone punched b, then in fact it must be true for everyone that there is someone that punched them. Okay, so uh, this is just the universal proof. This is this is okay. So now I have to get here. Well, okay. Unfortunately, how am I going to do this? Uh, how do I prove that there is someone that punched B? Uh, of course, I'm once again not going to be able to to produce this person. So there's only one way to do this, and it's also by contradiction. So once again, I'm going to start. Uh, a, uh, a proof by supposing that it's not true that there exists an x such that uh, p x b cha and um, and arriving at a bottom and so I don't know how much 
space I need exactly. Mm -mm. But uh, I need to get a bottom out. Okay, so. Man, what now? Now, I find myself staring uh, at uh, my goal, which is to get this bottom using three negations. Still, none of these negations are kind of immediately helpful to me because I can't do anything with the negation except, um, except use it in a contradiction. So, uh, all right, well, what's happening? Line 12 is, is kind of the, 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 uh, the uh, thing that I'm assuming to, the, the, the big thing I'm assuming to try to, try to do this proof. 13 was the beginning of a proof by contradiction. 14 is the beginning of another proof by contradiction. Well, where is this contradiction going to come from? Uh, this is, I think, the hardest moment of all. How am I going to get this contradiction? What, what should I be aiming for here? And the answer is, uh, well, I am already in the middle of a proof by contradiction of 13. So 13 is not going to help me. Um, it's really, or no, wait, hold on, I said that backwards. I am already in the middle of trying to prove um, for all why there exists an x. Is this, is this what I want to say? Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm already in the middle of a proof by contradiction of line 13. Uh, and so uh, now I think it is this. Wait. Um, well, I just kind of know the answer. Why, why, why is this the, okay, I, I sort of just know what to do. Um, why am I explaining, why, how can I explain this? Uh, because, well, okay, uh, okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's just talk with that a little bit more. What do I know? I know three things. It's not true that everyone gets punched. It's not true that there is someone that everyone punches. And it's not true that <clears throat> someone punched B. Let me say that was all one more time. It's not true that someone punched B. But line 12 says uh, that it's not true that um, that it's not it's not true that for everyone uh, someone punched them. Okay, and so just kind of like taking a peek to make sure I'm doing this kind of all right here. Yeah. Oh man, this is just like so hard. Yeah, and so. Uh, and so it's really, it's now, I have to kind of just, I have to sort of keep track of kind of maybe sort of what I'm doing, which is I'm in the middle of trying to prove 12. So if in the middle of trying to prove 12, then I need to kind of go back to line 13 uh, for my contradiction. All right, why does this kind of make sense? Um, well, let me just try this kind of one more time. What does line 13 say? Line 13 says, there's not somebody, this is, the, this is the explanation, line 13 says there's not somebody that everybody didn't punch. So there's not an unpunched person. That's what 13 says, right? There's not a person that remained unpunched. But 14 says no one punched B. So you should feel that the contradiction uh, is going to come between 13 and 14. 13 says, there's not, there's not someone that, uh, that, that, that didn't get punched, but 14 says, B didn't get punched, because no one punched B. And so, um, well, uh, B seems to be a contradiction to this, to this kind of line 13, right? And so, uh, what I should sort of now prove is that this, this contradiction is actually going to come from showing 
that uh, B actually is this person. In other words, here it is. Um, so so I, I'm going to, this is my, this is my strategy now, uh, whether or not you, you um, uh, agree that it's, it's plausible to have come up with this, I'm going to, I hope I don't run out of room, I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to get this contradiction by uh, proving that there is someone uh, that everyone didn't punch, uh, but line 13 says that there is not someone that everyone uh, didn't punch. And uh, how am I going to get that contradiction? Well, I'm going to prove to you that there is someone that everybody didn't punch. Um, and uh, who is that person that everybody didn't punch? B is that person. In other words, I'm going to prove to you that everybody didn't punch B. And how can I prove that everybody didn't punch B? Well, that's what line 14 is saying. Line 14 is saying that there's not a person who punched B. Okay, so now I just need to bridge the gap between here and here, and I think now I know what to do because I just need to prove this universal statement. How do I prove a universal statement? I, uh, from nothing, prove that uh, A didn't punch B. If I can prove that A didn't punch B from nothing, then in fact everybody didn't punch B. And how am I going to get this statement? Uh, well, I start yet another proof by contradiction. So here in line 15, I suppose that A punched B. Okay, but that is impossible because of line 14. So, mm, this is working out perfectly. Uh, I think this explanation is, is good uh, as well. Uh, here, if A, this says that A punched B, so that means there exists someone uh, who uh, punched B, but that is just a straight contradiction uh, with line 14. So, yeah, I hope, I'm going to check, I'm going to take a peek at my answer key for a second just to make sure this is what I did uh, there too, but I think it is. And then 30 would just be the, the final by conditional statement. Ooh, I'm off by one, oh, because I missed a line, it's 28. Um, so yeah, this is exactly what I did in the packet. So 29, uh, 30, and finally 31. Okay, so man, uh, now that I've done it, uh, I bet you can understand everything. I think there were two sort of key moments in this proof. The key moment number one was um, sort of uh, was was it was knowing right now, uh, at this point, uh, at this point, I'll put a blue question mark, you had to think to do, to do this. So you had to realize uh, right there at that blue question mark that the way you were going to get your, your ultimately get the contradiction line 28 was uh, to uh, attempt uh, to prove line 26 and that that would contradict line 12. And the other, I think much more difficult part, the part which I, I hope I explained but possibly uh, just barely explained, um, was that, uh, that when you were sitting right here and you didn't, we didn't know what to do, that we should aim for uh, this, uh, I guess, uh, something that, that we should aim sort of here. That the goal, um, when, when sitting there just after line 14, that the way we were going to get that, that contradiction was to, uh, to, to come up with a, with a statement which was the opposite of, of line 13, uh, and that to do that, um, 
I could just uh, say, I could just prove that, um, that B is someone that no one punched. Okay, uh, let's just do these notations and call the night. Uh, what happened? Uh, my first sort of thing that requires a justification is right here. This is just existential intro, line 15. Uh, if A punched B, then someone punched B. This is an intro, um, 16, 14. And this is a bottom intro, 17. So that's how I get my, my first contradiction. Uh, line 19 justification is just negation intro, uh, 15 through 18. Uh, then I assumed nothing uh, and, and got that A uh, didn't punch B. So therefore in line 20 I say that um, uh, by, by universal intro everyone didn't punch B. Uh, so that's uh, uh, universal central 15 through 19. Here I uh, throw in an existential intro. Uh, if everybody didn't punch B, then there exists someone such that everybody didn't punch. Um, so that's existential 20. Um, 22 is an and intro of 21 and 13. This is bottom intro 22, <coughs> negation intro 14 through 23, negation elim 24. Uh, here I did a, another universal proof. I uh, took an arbitrary uh, variable b and proved something about it. Um, yeah, therefore it must hold for everybody. So that's 14 through 25. Uh, this is an intro 26 and 12. Finally, a bottom intro 27, uh, a negation intro um, 13 through 28, uh, and a negation elim uh, 29. And then the final justification of the overall statement is by conditional intro, uh, and there is the proof 1 through 11 that we did in erase, and then this proof 12 through, through 30. Okay, there it is. Um, I hope I, I did a good job. It's, it's sort of too late now, but I hope I did a good job at this sort of crucial moment in uh, kind of explaining, uh, uh, specifically this red, uh, explaining this, this kind of moment of, of how you get there, but that's proof 45, uh, and if you, if you made it this far, you are really an expert on, on natural deduction, so goodbye.